us to Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. We're going to look at our familiar verse. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. The title message is, Are You Growing Good Habits? Are You Growing Good Habits? Colossians 3.23, Are You Growing Good Habits? Colossians 3.23. The Bible says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you first of all for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away. Thank you for the eternal life that you have bestowed upon us and filling us with the Holy Ghost, where we don't have to worry where we're going to go once we depart from this body. Thank you for the church that you have established where we can gather together in one mind, in one heart, Lord God, Amen. help each and every one of us to focus on your word, Lord, and not to think about things that are happening uh, outside, Lord. Uh, we ask you that you'll be with Pastor Jay, fill him with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Amen. Allow him the liberty to declare your whole counsel unto us, and open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Please protect us from the devil's attacks and help us to form good habits and the bad habits help us to just break those things away. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You know, right away it starts, right? You know, you have a habit of knowing someone to be there, but they're not there for whatever reason, right? <laughs> so right off the bat, you know, what's, what is the characteristic of a habit? Habit is something that you do without thinking, you know, you know, you eat out of habit. You sleep out of habit. You wash up out of habit. You go to church out of habit. You go to school out of habit. You go to work out of habit. So habit is something that you do without thinking. You know, that becomes who you are. And habits translates into character. And that character makes who you are. So if you have good habits, then you have good character. If you have bad habits, and you have bad character, simple as that. If you're a type of person who always likes to gossip, then you have bad character. You know, we have many, many people who come through our church who's still with us. You know, we are not perfect. And you have bad habit of just gossiping. You know, just love talking about other people. And not the good stuff, usually. You know, you love that news. Just like the media out there, just like the TV stations, you want to hear and you want to discuss, you know, something that's bad, something that's, you know, terrible, something that's, you know, worse than good. And unfortunately, when it comes to human beings, you don't have to practice, you don't have to grow, you don't have, you don't have to work hard to have bad habits. No. You're naturally born with bad habits. Amen. You're selfish. Yeah. From the day you were born, you just want things for yourself. You cry out to your mama and your daddy. You cry out to your grandma, grandpa. You cry out to your aunt and everybody, uncles. They're like, hey, I need some food. Hey, you know, take care of me, right? And if you don't get your way, what, what do people do? They just cry and cry and cry until you get your way. So don't worry about, you know, the bad habits. Am I growing bad habits? You know, you do, naturally. If you don't grow good habits, what do you think you're doing? You're growing bad habits, right? Just simple as that. You know, if you're not thinking about things of God, you're thinking about ungodly things. If you're not watching godly things, then you're watching ungodly things. To me, there's like no in-between, right? So it's up to you to think about your Christian walk today. Am I growing good habits, godly habits? That's in the Word of God. 
And we're going to look at those later. But first things first, you have to recognize and admit that you have bad habits. You know, when you go to any anonymous addiction places, what's the first thing they tell you to do? Admit it. Yes. You know, as Christians, you and I have to admit that we have some bad habits. Yeah, each person may be different. But generally speaking, we do have certain bad habits that everyone usually have. And one of the things is that we have bad habit of giving excuses. Man, as a human being, accountability and responsibility is hard to find. It should be a fundamental you know, foundation of a human being to be accountable and be responsible. But if America was full of accountable and responsible persons, it wouldn't be like this. Starting from the top, politicians, they're not accountable. They're not responsible. I mean, what does accountability and responsibility mean, right? You keep your promises. You do the whole duty of a man. If you say, yeah, I'm going to fix that road, then fix it, right? Amen. I'm going to do this and do that, then do it. Yeah. I mean, as a Christian, if you say you're going to do it, no matter how much negative impact it's going to come back to you, you have to do it. It came out of your mouth. Do it, right? It's, I mean, you're going to reap what you sow regardless. It's better to sow it the right, I mean, yeah, reap it the right way than to try to hide it and justify things. Your bad habit, especially when it comes to excuses, have gotten into, have put you into a lot of, you know, tough spot. From the days when you were young and little, when you start giving excuses, you know, who broke that plate? You know, it wasn't me. It was my hand who did it. You know, it was the baseball who did it. It was the basketball who did it. It was the dog. It was the cat. You know, it was the wind. I don't know. It was everything except you. And that bad character just continues to grow and grow and grow. If you're not truthful as young people to your parents right now, I guarantee you, as you grow up, you're going to get worse and worse and worse. That's true. And then you're going to lie to your spouses if you ever get married. You're going to lie to, I mean, your bosses. You're going to lie to your coworkers. You're going to lie to everybody. It's really hard to find someone who's always truthful. You know, if you could find one person that you could wholeheartedly trust without any doubt, you're blessed. You can't even find that in marriages nowadays. Right? You know, if you were to ask your husband or wife, can I see your phone? Give me your password. You're like, what? I thought we have privacy. That's invasion of privacy. Take it. You don't need to know what I'm doing, right? You know, certain hours of the day just for me. Well, just give me a second, you know, let me, you know, erase all the oh, history, no. okay? All the chat history, you know, sites that you visited, all the apps, you know. Just wait, okay? And then I'll let you see my phone after the, all the evidence is gone, right? I mean, that's, a, that's not a healthy relationship. That's not a good habit. Amen. When you can't trust each other in a relationship, why do you even be together? Right. I mean, that's not good. But a lot of times it just doesn't stop there. And then that just goes to all the parts of your life. And if you have something to hide on your phone, then, you know, something's wrong with you. Yes. Especially as a so-called Bible-believing Christian, you know, every one of us should be able to look at everyone's phone. Yes. You know, minus the real personal stuff, right? Like bank account and stuff. Forget about those. You know, but like, you know, like what kind of apps you have on your phone, right? Man, God forbid, I don't want to see like Tinder on your phone, right? <laughs> God forbid, I don't want to see like casino apps on your phone, right? Like, oh, you know, it's just for fun. Well, I accidentally downloaded it. Yeah. Well, how, who accidentally downloads it, right? I think you have to go through certain steps. Sure. I mean, I have phone, you know. Everyone has a phone. They're not dummy. You have to go, do you really want to download it? Or you have to do like, what? what is it? Like a, like a facial approval, yeah. you know, something. 
identification approval. So you can't say, you know, it happened accidentally. No, you know and you knew exactly what you were doing. So no excuses. I mean, if you get caught with your hands in the cookie jar, just admit it. That's my hand. That's me. And if Lori is telling you right now that, hey, you need to wake up, you better get rid of those bad habits. And then you got to replace it with good habits. Then you got to do it. You know, one of the things that people don't realize is that just because you get rid of bad habit, it, it's not the end. You have to replace it with something else. Yeah. It's like this, you know, building has a foundation. If that foundation is er- eroding and it's, you know, it's going to fall apart yes. and that's your bad habit, you get rid of it and you, you have to replace it with good habit. Amen. You need that foundation because what happens? You become this type of person who loves this phrase, just in case, just in case. A lot of people have that just in case mentality. If you've been addicted to drugs, if you've been addicted to alcohol, if you've been addicted to smoking, you've been addicted to whatever it is, wicked things, right? You have that just in case as your excuse. I'm having a bad day. You know, I've been safe for a while, but you know, back in the day, what gave me comfort was some drugs. What gave me comfort was some booze, you know? So just in case, I'm gonna save six pack somewhere. You know, I, I, I can't see it every day. I'll see it only when I have to. Just in case, you know, I'm gonna keep this contact. Who always provided me with my drugs? Just in case, you know? Just in case, just in case. See, just in case will eat your life. Just in case will never let you get rid of those bad habits. You try to replace it with good habits. Good, good habits wants to grow and grow and grow. But that, man, just in case, it's not at the top of the foundation. It's always at the bottom, the most important part of the foundation. And that just in case, when you reach down to it, it will always be there because you never gotten rid of it. And as a human being, that just in case, those bad habits always, you know, shows up at the worst moment in your life. Yes. So when you're going through a tough time, and we all do as a human being, and especially as a Bible-believing Christian, we go through tough times. What kind of good habits do you rely on? Or what kind of bad habits are you relying on? Okay, you're going through a financial hardship. This day and age is tough. Economy is not the best. And yes. especially, there isn't a too many things that a Bible Christian can do, right? What are you going to do? Just in case, you know, I save some money to go to Vegas. Just in case, you know. And then you, you gamble your money away. No. A lot of Christian households, breaks up because of financial issues and a lot of times because, you know, one of the family members gets into gambling addiction. So you have to think about it. Am I that type of person, right? Even, you know, I'm sure none of you guys are smokers still after you've gotten safe. Who am I kidding, right? Just because you're safe doesn't mean that you don't smoke anymore if you smoke in the past. Yeah. But... It's a habit that you have to get rid of. Yes. Why? Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you can't be saying that, you know what, you know, I'm going to save my favorite Marlboros, right? You know, <laughs> just as a memorabilia. Oh, okay, God. and then I'm going to put it in a trophy, and you, know, you can't open it. You know, I put a, the strongest you know, locks in there. But who has the locks? You have the locks, right? Even if you threw the locks away, there's always a way to break things. Yeah. And then when you are desperate enough, those bad habits will show. I mean, Bible says, our text verse says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily. I mean, whatever it is, right? Do it heartily as unto though and not unto man. So when the tough times come, the true character shows as people say, right? When you are down and out, when nobody's on your side, and your health is, you know, failing, you know, everything's failing in your life, I mean, what kind of habits do you display, right? 
I mean, we're going to look at some of the good habits that you have to display. And one of the things that you can't do is you cannot, again, prepare yourself and prepare for flesh. What does that mean? When time gets tough, it's not time to please your flesh. It's not. Flesh just wants destruction of you. You know, pleasure for a season, it's going to destroy you, right? I mean, if, if, say, married couple gets into argument, hate each other so much, and suddenly, you know, good old Facebook social media, right? Your high school, someone that you knew contacts you, and you're like, you have that void, right? Oh, I hate my wife, I hate my husband, you know, and then devil uses that instance and brings that person, and God is testing you at that moment because Lord allows devil, right? Yeah. And he cannot kill you, touch you, whatnot, unless gets permission from God. And then what's going to happen? If you have good habits, right. if you love your wife and you know that as a Christian man and woman, you have to be faithful to your spouses, Amen. you're going to just ignore it once and for all. Yes. Or even, you know, go beyond further, right? If they, okay, best thing is to just abstain from all appearance of evil, right? Amen. But if you're a type of person like, you know what, man? If I need to put a you know, nail to the coffin, you know, just tell it like it is. Don't you ever contact me ever again, right? Yes. You, you remind me of the horror of revelation, <laughs> right? And I do not want to be that. And I don't, don't want to become a whoremonger. Amen. And again, it's not just a physical act, Christians. Yeah. It's your mind. Yes. Many of you, I don't know, you have not... I guess many of you have been faithful physically, but many of you haven't been faithful internally. Yes. I mean, look at the Sermon on the Mount and look at the book of Matthew, look at the verses. If you lusted after a woman, you've committed adultery with her already. Did the action actually happen? No. You thought about it. Yeah. That's a great sin in the Bible. Amen. Get rid of that bad habit. I mean, don't, if you, if you be married, I mean, if you're going to get married, you know, if you have a fiancé, right, or something, if you have husband or wives, get rid of that bad habit. Amen. Just have a pure heart. You made that commitment. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't your best friend. It wasn't your dog. It wasn't your cat. It's you and the other person. You two made a commitment till death do us apart, then be faithful to each other, inside and outside. Yes. And too many marriages, you know, Christian marriages are on the brink of, you know, destruction because they have bad habits. Constantly, you know, they could only look at worse things about each other. You know, before you get married, all you looked at was the good things and best things about each other. Literally, that's all you looked at, you know. Even... Even the girl, you know, was messy. Oh, that's the you know, most beautiful thing, right? Even the guy was most obnoxious. I mean, that's the, that's the best thing, right? <laughs> but now after you get married, they're like, man, the, <sighs> that's the ugliest person when they do those things. I mean, that comes to your head. That comes, it creeps to your mind. Okay, people are not perfect. You're getting to know each other more and more. Yes. But what's... The charity about, right? It's a sacrifice. You got to show some compassion to each other. So people who can't stand or who doesn't last or who does not have a good relationship, to me, you don't have good habit of having compassion at heart. You're always selfish. To me, compassion and selfish never go together. If you're selfish, you never think about other people. And unfortunately, this day and age in America, everybody's so selfish. You don't have to practice it, but you just grow and grow and grow. Everything that media talks about, everything that school teaches, right, is all about you. You, 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 you. you know, it can't be you. you know, as a Christian, it's not about you. you know, it's all about Lord Jesus Christ and others. 
Amen. That's it. You become last in the Christian walk. Then the part of the habits that you have to look at is I have to remove myself from the foundation and I have to put Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then you put others. And then you put yourself at the end, like all the way at the end, right? <laughs> like you don't need to be there for the foundation to be strong. No. Foundation will go on with Lord Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And then because of Lord Jesus Christ, others come in. And then you're that sliver, you know, 1.000 millimeter up there, <laughs> you know, just barely, you know, like a little paper, like this paper, it could go through. You should be a paperweight when yeah. it comes to the foundation. That's Don't right. even think about yourself. I mean, we, we've been constantly preaching that you and I are less than nothing, right? Amen. You know, I feel like nothing's in the air, right? And it's like weightless. Right? There's like no point. It's like you should be that kind of stuff. You're like pointless, weightless, saved sinner. That's it. Woo! And, but Lord can do something with you. If Lord is the one who's forming all of your good habits, then you become something through the Lord. Yes. But again, you yourself, it's always nothing. That's why you have to replace bad habits with good habits. Let's turn to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. And again, habit is something that you do without thinking. And if you're not doing some of the, you know, biblical things that as a habit, then you have to get right with the Lord. Romans 12, verse 21. Romans 12, verse 21. The Bible says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So, don't let that bad habit overcome you. You have to get rid of it. Replace it with good habit. Then when it becomes, in order to become like that, number one, you have to change your mindset. It all starts from your mind. It always starts from your mind. Amen. You have to change your mindset. You know, I have to start cultivating. I have to start growing some good habits, period. I mean, it starts from me, and I know as a human being, people are just lazy. People tend to become lazy, you know, when... You just leave him alone. True. It's, it's like simple, right? You don't really want to do things for God when you're left alone. When you leave yourself out in the open and you're not constantly filled with the word of God, prayer and everything, you are going to just destroy. You're going you're to become nothing. Yeah. All you're going to do is fill the you know, lust of your flesh continuously, continuously. So each day and each moment, even right now, you have to have a good habit of having the mind of God. Amen. What does it mean to having the mind of God? The Word of God. Amen. Constantly, you got to, you know, I, at the end of the day, all of your thoughts should be all about the Word of God. Yeah. Your conversation should be based on the Word of God. Whether you're talking about news, right? Whether you're talking about things happening in you know, Israel, whether you're thinking about or talking about you know, even just general things like sports or anything, or even if you're talking about politics or anything, everything should be founded and based upon the Word of God. Amen. You can't be so naive in this world, right? You can't be like, oh yeah, you know, I need to gain all this knowledge of the world so I could you know, witness to people, okay, that's always half truth. Before that, you need knowledge of the Word of God. That's the good habit you should have. You should be thinking about the Word of God all the time. You know, they, they you know, it's so commercialized this, I don't want to use that phrase. You have to think about, you know, what would Lord really want me to do, right? Yeah. Is this going to please my Lord? And again, one of the best things to do is that create a habit. 
every day when you wake up, you ask the Lord to be the ruler of your heart. Amen. Right away, right off the bat. That's not too hard. No. You just get on your knees, pray for, you know, a few seconds, a few minutes, heart to heart talk with the Lord. Lord, you know, you know how wicked I am. If I let my thoughts go my way, it's the worst way. Yes. So I want you to be ruler of my thoughts. Every action, decision, thoughts that I do and make and I choose, I want you to help me to make those choices. Amen. Then, you know, Holy Spirit will just constantly, he already convicts you, but he's going to give you stronger, you know, conviction. Hey, don't do it. Hey, do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Do it. Because you want the Lord to be the final say in your decision making. Yes. You don't want you to be you. No. I don't want to be me who's making the final decision. Because if I'm put in a tough situation, if I were to make the decision, I'm going to be coward about it. I'm going to choose what's best for me. But Lord doesn't do things like that. Lord First of all, when he died on the cross for your sins, he did it for you and me. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to suffer all that torture. He didn't have to suffer to the point where he was unrecognizable. He didn't have to suffer until he had to drop every single blood out of him. Can you do it? No. Can I do it? Never. I mean, I'm not going to you know, drain my blood for Kim Jong-un, right? The North Korean dictator. Like, yeah, you know, because I love you, man. You know, I'm going to drop every blood for you. No, sir. I'm going to be crucified on the cross for you, you know. I'm going to be disfigured for you. No. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just a human being. But Lord did that for you. Thank you. And when you think about what the Lord has done for you, you and I have to really, really get on our knees and confess our sins to the Lord for having so many bad habits in our life. Amen. Everything. Yes. So if you never conferred and, you know, communicated with the Lord, and if you did not have, you know, Lord to be ruler of your heart, every single thing that you've ever done, you know, out of your own good and own desire is wrong. This foundation is wrong. You know, that's why a lot of people don't have good relationship, period, as a human being. They always seem like so, how should I say, you know, fictional, hypocritical, facade. Why? Because their foundation is not with Lord Jesus Christ. So everything you do is for your image. And Christians fall into it. Don't do it because of your image, right? I shouldn't do it just because I'm a pastor, right? I do it because that's what the Lord wants me to do. Amen. That's it. That's the, that's the habit that I'm trying to grow on a daily basis. I don't do it just so that I could look good on you. I do it because I love the Lord, because He's fi my final authority, and because when I obey Him and do His things, naturally things are going to work out. That's why when you live your life fictitiously, like with the facade on your face, what happens? When little things go wrong, you explode. Yes. You know? Great commonality of general Christians is that they cannot handle any type of trials and tribulation. Why? Because you're a fake. That's what you are. Amen. I mean, a lot of times when things get tough, you're not tough. I tell you why. You don't have good habits. That's why. But don't be so despondent and don't be so sad. Peter was like that. Peter denied the Lord. So you and I, we know we fall into those traps, trials, and stuff. But don't, like, give up either. Amen. Don't, like, raise your hand and say, you know what? I'm just that person. Man, don't be that loser, right? I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Okay, now what? Just because you're saved by sinner, you're going to live like sinner the rest of your life? No, sir. God forbid. 
Just, I, I know I'm going to heaven, but you know, I'm good for nothing, Christian. I'm still going to drink. I'm still going to do drugs. I'm still going to cheat on my spouses, right? I'm still going to cheat. I'm going to still steal. I'm just going to gamble my way. You know, I'm just going to be a distraction. But I'm going to go to heaven. I mean, what kind of attitude is that? Yeah. If someone loved you so much that they die for you, you want to please them. Amen. Man, if, if your mom died for you and said, hey, son, just one thing. Don't ever do it, right? Don't ever do something that will make you go to jail. Then you got to think about your mom's last word, yeah. right? So even when you want to do it, you're like, oh, man, I love my mom too much. I can't do it. You, you heard that expression a lot, right? I love my mom, I love my dad too much, man, I can't do it, you know. That's one thing they didn't want me to do, right? You hear that all the time. But you have that kind of, you know, affinity, love for your physical parents. What about Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. creator of the universe? He died for you. Yes. He shed his precious blood for you, and he saved you from burning hell. Amen. Eternal lake of fire. And you can't even do that one thing. You can't even get rid of that, you know, bad habit. I mean, literally, we have to get rid of all the bad habits, but there are certain bad habits which is just controlling you. And I don't know what it is, right? But you know what it is, Amen. and God knows what it is. Yes. Then you have to resolve it. Because something about Lord's timing is that when you and I get conviction, when Lord tells us to correct things in our lives, and we don't do it, and we just let it go by side, then he's going to chastise us eventually. And when he chastises us, you're going to have scars for your life. Yep. Simple as that. It's, it's not like some little, you know, tap on the head, the back of your hand, you know. No, no it's going to be something that's going to be traumatic, and that's going to last for all your life. And that's going to be a reminder. You're going to look at that scar. It could be in your face, on your face. It could be on your hand, your arm, legs, you know, internally. You're going to be like, man, sure. Lord, I fear you. I mean, you don't want to learn the fear of God the hard way. No. You already know how the Lord works. You know, just, to, just time for you to get right. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not after you get married. It's not after you start your career. It's time for you to get right with the Lord. It's right now. Amen. I mean, people have a wrong idea. I've gotten away with it for so long. The Lord's going to give me more grace. Oh. Man, that's when you... When he's going to be like, okay, time's up. You know, who do you think I am? You know, I'm, I'm a fair and just God. Don't play with my grace. Amen. Don't play with my mercy. But that's what, I mean, whole world's doing right now. The yeah. sin of the world, just the cup is getting filled up. And the Lord should be coming pretty soon, you know, Amen. based on how the world's turning. But you want to be found a faithful servant. Amen. You don't want to be found an unfaithful servant. An unfaithful servant means bad habits. Then let's see some of the good habits that we have to grow on a daily basis. Let's go to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. And these habits, you and I already know. But how much are you doing it? Right? Luke 22, verse 39, the Bible says, And he came out and went. Who Jesus Christ, as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said, and then prayed that he enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. Man, he's a prime example. You gotta pray. You gotta kneel down and pray. You know, you and I shouldn't be praying on our back. Amen. I mean, a lot of people think that I pray. How do you pray? You know, if you physically can't do it, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't, right? If your back's hurting, you know, my wife's back hurts, right? And, you know, if you physically can't do it, yeah. And then as a brethren, don't you be like that person. Hey, she didn't kneel and pray. He didn't kneel and pray. Do you know their situation? You don't. So you got to shut your mouth. Just mind your own business. Amen. You have to pray. You have to pray. I mean, if you, Lord pray, Daniel pray, and always pray. And pray without ceasing, right? Yes. First of Thessalonians chapter 5. You have to pray. That's got to be your habit. 
man, you got to do Nehemiah prayer, right? Before you answer anybody, ask the Lord for wisdom. You have to pray for any big events that's coming in your life. You have to pray daily for what's going to happen. You just have to pray. Even at this moment, you have to constantly pray that the Lord will protect you from devil's temptation. You have to constantly pray because what do you think is happening? The wicked spirits of the world are just going through, trying to stay in your mind. You know, trying to make you think about, you know, other stuff than the word of God and the preaching, right? Doesn't that happen to you sometimes? Man, I'm concentrating so hard. Suddenly, some stupid thought comes into my head, right? Yeah. I mean, some wicked worldly music line just start playing. You know, you got to plead the blood of Jesus Christ and you got to get rid of it. And in order to do that, you got to pray. You have to pray and pray and pray. Yes. <laughs> and without saying, I mean, this is not a rhetoric. You just have to pray. The more you pray, the better habits you're going to have. Less pray, you're going to have worse habits you're going to have. Bad habits. Do you honestly think that you pray to God, God, please bless me when I'm doing these drugs? Lord, please bless me when I'm watching this dirty stuff. You can't, especially if you're safe and if you're not backslidden to the point where your conscience is seared with a hot iron, there's going to be something in you. Like, oh, man, you know what? I can't do it. It's going to at least make you think and stop you from doing it for a little bit. But your flesh is so strong that a lot of times you overcome it with your fleshly desires, and still do it. But you know what? If you constantly pray, eventually it's going to help you. Amen. You have to. So you have to pray. That prayer life is a good habit that you have to display as a Christian. I have to. Every single one of us. Yes. Right? We don't do it to show off to people if you're at home. You do it because that's going to help you keep good habits. Right? Don't pray just to show it to your children. Right? I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's better that they see you pray than you watching TV all day, you know, or doing phones. But, you know, you do it because, like Lord did it, because you want to talk to the Lord. Yes. You know, you want Lord to help you constantly. Even right now, as I preach, right? I want Lord to help me preach the things that needs to be preached. Right? I can't let that lifeline, prayer lifeline, go at any moment. I have to hold on to it, and I have to use it constantly. And so first thing, you have to have a good habit of, you know, prayer life, right, without saying. Second one, uh, it goes hand in hand. You have to study the Bible every day, daily, not just Sunday, not just Wednesday. You have to study the Word of God on a daily basis. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to study. It doesn't matter. You just have to study. I mean, if you don't study, your knowledge will never grow. Without that knowledge, you can't have a deeper relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Without that knowledge, you can't really preach and teach to others. If you really want to be a good soul winner, you have to know the Bible. Yes. It's not just Romans Road. You're going to meet so many people who's outside of Romans Road. Yeah. You're going to meet people you know, in different cults and religions out there. People who's works by salvation, people who says Jesus, believe Jesus in the Old Testament, people who talks about tribulation, people who talks about Sermon on the Mount, people who talks about Abraham, right? You have to know. Amen. You know, the just shall live by faith, right? Through grace, by faith, you and I are saved. Amen. However, it's different in different ages, yes. different periods. Right? For example, so Abraham's salvation is type of our salvation. But did he have the same type of faith? He didn't. 
He didn't just believe Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and he got saved. No. He had to fulfill that faith by offer Isaac yes. on the altar. Same thing with Noah. He had to build the ark. That's how his faith were completed. Amen. Our faith gets completed when it comes to salvation, when we trust Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yes. Simple you, as that. Jesus. That's why you have to study the Bible. If someone comes up to you and talks to you like, hey, you know, I have to keep my commandments, you know, just like Moses, Mosaic laws. What are you going to say? Right. You have to know the Bible. You can't just say, believe Jesus, believe Jesus, right? Some people, it doesn't work like that. Why? Because they've been taught a lot of wrong doctrines in their life. You know, best cases are always what? People who doesn't know anything about the Bible, but who believes the Bible, and then they want to get saved because they don't want to burn in hell. Very, very, you know, simple salvation. Even though it's a simple salvation, people who's been in a, say, for example, you know, someone's been in, uh, you know, like, where churches where I only talk about speaking in tongues, right? and dreams and visions. How are you going to talk to them? They're going to say, you know, I believe in Jesus, but I still, I, I, I know that he talks to me through my dreams. <laughs> he talks to me through visions. And sometimes, you know, I just pray, and then I just go hallelujah many times, and I start speaking in tongues. How are you going to talk to them if you don't know the Bible? Yeah. I mean, tongues are for a sign. Right. Not for you, it's for Jews, yeah. right? I mean, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. You know, that's so. It is imperative. It's most important. Along with prayer, you have to have a good habit of studying the Bible on a daily basis. Don't just study today. Don't just study Wednesday. You have to study every day. Then how are you going to form that habit? you got to set a time each day. You have to be disciplined. Yes. Don't just say, you know what? Today, I'm going to study the Bible. But man, you have work, you have school, you have to raise your children, you have other things going on, and suddenly, like, you know, it's like 11 p.m. Ah, I'll study double tomorrow. No one ever studies double, right? It's like someone who says, I'm going to read the Bible throughout the year. You missed the first month. I'm going to make it up next month or next two days. You know, I'm going to... You, you can't even read three chapters a day, and then suddenly you say, tomorrow I'm going to read 60 chapters, and I'm going to make it up. You know, that's not going to happen. So you have to form a good habit. You know what? Before I sleep, I'm just going to study the Bible for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, no matter what. Because then you don't have to be, you know, pressured by your time. Because whether you sleep at 1, 12, 10, 11, you're going to study, no matter what. Yes. Or that's why a lot of people do these things either end of the day, beginning of the day, or both, beginning and end of the day, yes. right? A lot of calls out there, man, they pray to their own God like five times a oh, day. Yeah. Man, like they have better dedication than you and me, yeah. right? You know, but we can't even show two, right. two times, you know? No. you know? I mean, it should be morning, noon, and night, but, yes. you know? We can't, we're not there yet to go that far if you can't even do one time a day, right? So form a good habit. Like once a day, whether it's morning or night, before you go to sleep or after you wake up, and study the Bible. You're like, I don't know what to study. You know, just read the Word of God. And we have, and a lot of you, many of you who's listening as well, you know, you, got, you came to the truth through the Internet ministry. We have a lot of good stuff. Right? A lot of commentaries, teachings, you know, in our YouTube channel, then go pick one. And then whether it's like a soul winner's, you know, topics or commentaries and just study. You know? All parts. You know, not just, you know, parts that you like. From Genesis all the way to Revelation. Everything in between. You have to be familiar with and you have to study. And you, if you do that, then you're gonna form a good habit where it's going to help you from sinning. Yeah. If you have this book, it's going to stop you from sinning. Amen. Think about it. You are a man of prayer. You pray, and you also have word of God. And that's good two-edged sword. Yes. 
A lot of times you're not going to hurt yourself in that case. Many times because you don't have both of them, because you're not balanced, you cut yourself. Don't be that person who only does the Bible study. We've seen those cases. They have so much knowledge, but they never pray. And because you don't pray, God doesn't rule your heart. You become a very proud person. So when they try to witness and teach, he comes as someone who wants to show, show up. I know more than you. I'm better than you type. When you talk to someone, when you see people's reaction, when you truly are doing it out of that, their love for their lost souls, it's different. You might have, you, you, you have like so much more knowledge than them, but it doesn't come up as someone who's haughty and proud and trying to tell me what I don't know, but in a very uh, looking down way. That's why you have to have both. And also, again, if you don't study the Bible, you could have all the zeal in the world. You're not going to answer their questions. And that you're going to lose that opportunity. Because they're like, I've heard this from everybody. Jesus saves. But what about my works? You know? I, I feel like if I don't confess my sins and I die, I don't think I'm going to go to heaven. How are you going to answer those questions? My body still sins. How am I going to go to heaven if I kill someone and I die? Right? I mean, then, then you got to know some doctrines like spiritual circumcision, your body and soul separated once and for all. So your soul cannot sin anymore. Amen. And of course, you go to Galatians 6, 7, like, you know, you read what you sow, okay? Don't worry about it. You commit sin, Lord's going to make you pay, right. right? Yes. There's judgment seat of Christ. Like, if you don't know the Bible, you can't explain judgment seat of Christ. I didn't know. And I was using, you know, those dumb Bibles out there. No. What are those? Non-King James Bible, which includes New King James Bible, which is bad Bible too. Yes. Satanic Bible. And they change so many words. You know, instead of judgment seat of Christ, they say judgment seat of God. And it's confusing, just like the white throne judgment. So you cannot de rightly divide the word of God. So you have to do your job as a Christian and as a command from God to study. Lord never said it, unlike other versions, like, do your best to study. Like, okay, my best today is that I can't study because I'm too tired. But study is a command. Yes, yes. 2 Timothy 2.15, it's a command. It's like if you go to army, military service, if a sergeant says, give me 10 push-ups, you don't say, you know what? You know, that's not how I interpret you, right? The best way I know, do, I, I know how to do push-up, I'm only going to do one. That's my best for you. Okay, I mean, you're going to be in big trouble. You do 10, you do 10. In order to do that, you have to just obey the Bible as he says. Study. Then you have to study. You and I have to study on a daily basis. And third thing, so prayer, study the Word of God. And third thing is natural. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. I'm sure some of you were thinking, that, were thinking about this or thinking this verse. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And some people have a bad habit of not doing this according to this verse. Not forsaking, Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. So we're looking at this manner, this habit of some people, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We meet. We have services. Yes. Don't forsake it. It should be your habit that you're at the church door whenever it's open. Yeah, you, cannot, you cannot forsake this assembling. And because why? Because it's the manner of some is. It's some people's habit. And then, you know, some people, it, 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 it happens really, really, you know, minimal, and it just grows. You know, uh, Sunday, I mean, our church Sunday service is too long. I can't be there all day. Uh, so I'm only going to go to one service. And then next time, you know what? I'm only going to go once every two weeks. Ah, you know what? I'll go once a month. And then, you know, I go every quarter. 
you know, I'm just going to become, I don't care what they call me, I'm going to become a, you know, what is it, CEO Christian. Christmas, Easter only. And then before you know it, you know, forget about going, driving, you know, I'm just going to watch on TV. <laughs> Why I'm, you know, playing with my phone, you know, why I'm eating, yeah. you know, why I'm lollygagging, you know, I'm not even paying attention. You know, I have a sports on the other channel, you know, I have other, you know, documentary dramas in the other split channel. Screen. Yeah, split screen into four, you know, oh, I'm like, yes. you know, that's how I'm going to do it. Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Yeah. There's reason why we meet. I mean, you listen to the Word of God, you have fellowship, and you grow. Yes. You get convicted, you get challenged. Amen. Without it, you are not going to sustain. It's unsustainable. You know, we hear brethren pray, like, thank God for the fellowship, right? You need this fellowship. Yes. You're not the only one walking this Christian path, Bible believer's path. And everybody's going through the same thing that you're going through whether it's good or bad, right? And if you do miss church for your own selfish reasons, then it's going to come back and bite you. We always understand you have to be, you know, understanding, right? That's why one of the habits that you have to grow is what? You know, pray before you speak. Pray. Before you speak. Many times, brethren gets offended. Why? Because someone spoke without praying. For example, say we're cleaning up churches, right? And then you see this buff, burly guy. 6'5", 250 pounds, chisel, all muscle, right? But... He's just using the dustmeister and doing dusting, right? You don't know his story. Just looking at him, you go, hey, man, go grab those heavy stuff. What do you think you're doing? You're a big boy. But come to find out, he just had major surgery on his back. He can't bend down. And then you don't see him anymore at the church. Because you offended that brother. And it's your fault. Yes. It came out of your mouth. Your desire was that everybody help each other and clean up the church. But good intentions is not the right intentions. You're right. So that's why everyone has their story, brethren. Everyone has issues that they're going through. Just because they don't do it doesn't mean that they're the most horrible Christians out there. Something's going on in their life. Yes. You pray for them, right? Yes. Downright, if they're displaying things, actions that's against the word of God, then you have to speak up, yeah. right? If someone comes into the church and starts smoking, you guys say, no. If someone comes into there and then, you know, be high and say all this causes like disruption, you know, you got to take him out, Right? Someone can't be coming in here taking out, you know, <laughs> alcohol and start drinking with the coffees with everybody. No. You got to tell them like it is. Amen. But when it comes to other things, right, when it's not so white and black as you see in the Word of God, then you have to keep your tongue. You have to, you know, you got to shut your mouth. We, we make mistakes trying to say good stuff to people. Yes. How much mistake do you think you make trying to criticize people? Right? That's why you have to have a good habit of holding your tongue, pray, and before you speak. Then you're not going to offend as many brothers or sisters like in the past. It's going to help you grow as a Christian, being more compassionate to our other Christians. Again, if Lord had his way, and if Lord were like you and me, you know, we probably would have destroyed every Christian, right? Man, you got on my nerve, you know? You didn't do what you were supposed to do. No, we're not perfect. 
It takes time for people to grow. Some people grow faster, but some people grow slower. And some people are just average. Then you have to account for everybody. And it doesn't just stop here. Then it has to be at home everywhere. Yes. Your expectation of your spouses, you know, shouldn't be too high, right? Right. It could always be low because they're human beings, right? But you have to lead them the right way, especially a man of the household, right? You are the head, right? You have yeah. Lord Jesus Christ, you, and your wife and your children. So you have to do your duty as a man of the house. Woman, you have to submit to your husband, right? And children, you have to obey your parents. These all have to, have to be formed in a good way. Good habit, good habit. Then you're going to have a godly family, godly household. And it won't be just a fake at the church, right? Yeah. A lot of times, man, kids are the most polite to their parents at church. They listen to everything. Man, but once they go home, it's, they're different animals, right? They lock the door. They ignore the parents. You know, they do whatever they want, right? So we don't want that. No. And lastly, you know, this good habit you and I have to have, you know, be the same person you are wherever you are, yes. right? But... If you're a really bad character, you know, change it, right? Change it. You got to replace it with good habit, right? You and I should not be a different person Monday, Tuesday than Sunday. You and I should be same every single day. Amen. You and I cannot be only holy on Sunday. You and I have to be holy every other day. Yes. Whether you are here, whether you're at home, whether you're at work, you got to be good testimony. you got to keep good testimony. That's what I'm saying, right? Don't be bad testimony all the time. Your good testimony at church, but your bad testimony at work or school, Lord's not going to get the glory. Yeah. Your good testimony at school and work, but your bad testimony at church, Lord's not going to get the glory. Your good day and good mommy at church, but bad day and bad mommy at home, bad testimony. Yeah. Good day and good mommy at home because you let them do whatever they want, but at church on Sunday, you have to be strict in front of people. Bad mommy and bad daddy, bad testimony. Yeah. Same thing with children. You have to be good testimony no matter what. And in order to do that, you have to strive to be same the way you treat people all the time and the way you behave all the time, the way you think all the time. I'll finish with this verse. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs 24. So in conclusion, we fall. We had bad habits for many, many years. Now you just have to replace it with good habits. You have to. I mean, you've fallen enough, but you know what? There's hope for you and me. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. We can't rise up again. The Bible says it. You've been full of bad habits all your life. You don't have to stay that way. You can't get up now. With your own strength, lo, by strength of Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him. Rely on him. You know, have a more intimate relationship with him, personal relationship with him. Amen. Pray more. Study more on a daily basis. Yes. Preach the word, right? And then Amen. go to the places when the doors open, right? When church doors open, go, right? And always think that you're really, really nothing, and I'm glad that God has saved me, and I'm glad he has given me opportunity to become better Christian, to become, become better child of God, and to have more opportunity to get rid of bad habits and grow with good habits. Let us pray. Dear Father, we are a creature of habits, Lord, but 
We just have too many bad habits, Lord. We don't pray like we should on a daily basis. We don't read the Word of God on a daily basis, study the Word of God. We don't preach the Word of God. And we always have selfish thoughts, no compassionate thoughts. Lord God, help us to get rid of our bad habits, Lord. Help us to replace them with good habits and start growing our good habits. It shouldn't just be, you know, one day, two day, just because we heard the message today, but it needs to be consistent. It should be every single day, Lord. So that we could be a better testimony for you, Lord. God, better witness for you, Lord. So that we could just become a better Christian, period, Lord. Heavenly Father, if any one of us have to get right with you, I pray that today is the day we get right with you. Don't wait until any longer, Lord. I pray that if each one of us, you know, realize that we need to get right with you, just put it into action, Lord, instead of just thinking about it, convicted about don't do nothing about it. Help us to be Christians that not only hears, but do be doers as well. Whatever the issues and problems that each person has in their life, Lord God, I pray that you will resolve it according to your will. And above all, Lord, come quickly now, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Bless the rest of the day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.